All right, so what I have here for you is uh, by far probably my most favorite thing that I've done to this car so far. I have a 2021 Subaru Crosstrek Sport, and I've gone ahead and added an aftermarket head unit to give myself a bigger screen, which was kind of the main goal, um, just so I could actually be able to see maps easier. This car had the base audio, which had the 6.2 inch screen, uh, which I felt was a bit small. and. Um, from a sound standpoint, I knew I was going to be a little bit spoiled because my last car had a completely aftermarket system installed in it, and it sounded fantastic, one of the best I've ever done, and uh, this sounded probably the worst that I've had in any car in 20 years, so I needed to fix that. So what I've installed here is a Sony 9500ES, which is a floating screen head unit, has a single DIN chassis. Which you can't really see because it's behind all this, but um, I want to show you some of the parts, uh, or at least go over some of what I've used. I'll probably have some installation picks at the end of this video. I'm hoping to loop in. So for the dash kit itself, uh, there's two kits you can use. There's one that's by American International, and there's also a Metra kit that you can use. Both of those have a top pocket here, which doesn't really come out, but then it has... Um, a double din opening or a single din opening um, and then there's another additional pocket that you can put in there if you really want to um, i of course have the double din poked out there so that i can fit all this in here uh, if you are putting an aftermarket head unit in this car i strongly suggest that you get something that has a single din chassis you will have a very hard time trying to fit everything in there if you have a double din chassis uh, space is definitely a uh, at a premium in this car trying to fit something like this in there. There are so many wires and adapters that you need to use so I have my microphone installed Right up here the factory microphone was actually here and I looked at possibly putting it there, but didn't really seem to work out and of course the uh, little wire just goes around the headliner here and then down so I am using a Maestro RR2 to interface to the car that handles a number of things, um, mainly just interfacing to the factory electronics and then also my steering wheel controls. Uh, there's also a little tap into the OBD2, which you can't really see, but it is there. So I'm just going to go over some of the features with this. Um, I shared out some pics of this and everybody was like, oh my god, I can't believe you're blocking the uh, vents. Believe me, you're really not. Uh, at best, you're maybe blocking one of the four on either side. And you're, you know, you're barely even doing that. And I have the air on right now, and believe me, I can feel it all on my face, on my knees. Uh, there's no problem with airflow here. So, I'm just going to go over some of the things here with it. Now, for the USB ports, that was kind of its own unique challenge. I actually had to order an entirely new PCB that had generic USB headers on it. But, we'll show off the head unit itself here. So, I have it on just regular Bluetooth mode right now. And uh, there's a number of gauges you can set up. This is just what I have on here right now. I don't really use this too much. It's kind of cool to look at, though. I like how you actually have a percentage for fuel as opposed to just the little blue bars there at the bottom. I like how they have these touch buttons on the bottom. You can actually customize those, but you do also have your volume up here, track forward and backward, voice prompt button, which quite honestly, I've never really used that. I don't really use that stuff talking into my phone at all. Um, you know, the phone works. Um, I mean, I don't really talk on the phone too much. Now, if I do want to switch to Android Auto, what I got to do here to go from regular Bluetooth mode over is I just hit the little I there, start Android Auto, and voila. 
and again if I want to go back to just regular Bluetooth which I usually do I don't really use the Android Auto for anything but maps and it really only takes a second and you can customize which things that you want where for cars that don't have access to this this is pretty nice now I can already access that information through the center part here but some older models you can't do that so that gives you a little more capability if you have an older cross truck and of course the rear camera still works uh, not so good if you have a bike rack on there and you can also set up multiple camera inputs as well XM uh, which I don't currently use that but it does have that capability as well uh, if I wanted to hook up XM to this I would have to get a tuner and then I would also have to get an adapter cable which lets me use the factory XM antenna as opposed to using just a little uh, antenna that comes with their kit you can do either one I would probably opt to use the factory antenna to have a little bit less wiring and there is just a ton of wiring behind this thing so right now running this um, I don't have any amplifiers I'm just running the factory speakers right off of deck power and uh, it's surprisingly good like it's unbelievable the change between the factory head unit and this thing I mean I, I would easily bet money that this sounds way better than the premium audio that Subaru would charge you a lot more money for and all I've done was just a head unit change going through the settings here um, I haven't really messed with too much of this yet just because I'm just running regular factory speakers but there is a number of things that you can mess with in here I do like that you have an option to actually run uh, stereo mode for the subwoofer outputs that might be something I mess with at some point so I this car needs a subwoofer really bad and there's a number of things that you can dig through in the maestro these are some of the uh, factory settings for that you normally access through your Subaru head unit I already have all that set up so I don't really need to mess with that too much I haven't really found the sweet spot for this setting just yet Unfortunately, I can't hear myself. I kind of have to ask others how I sound. There is an available software update for this, which I have not done yet. I'll have to find some royalty-free music, and we can go ahead and crank this up here. So I've been listening to a lot of Synthwave lately, and uh, this is one of my favorite channels on YouTube. We'll go ahead and crank it up here. And again, this is on factory speakers, which you're really not going to get a sense for just through a video. The other thing I will say for this too is um, even on a lot of aftermarket amps and aftermarket speakers, uh, once you get up to max volume, it really starts breaking up. Uh, I can have this thing pumped up as high as it'll go and there's just absolutely no distortion, which on factory speakers is just incredible. Uh, I don't know how they did it, but I, I love it. So I'll show you a couple other shots here of some of the install at the end of it here, and there'll be some more future videos that I do with this. 
Well, can't really leave the video without showing you the two things that I use the most on Android Auto and how awesome it is. So we'll go ahead and launch it there. And uh, the first one is Google Maps. And uh, having something that's this big is just amazing. Just so much easier to use than trying to look at your phone or trying to do this on some puny size screen. And it's nice that you can just do the pinch to zoom. And of course Spotify, which just looks fantastic. So big and easy to use here.